three, two, one. Howdy, howdy, this is Mr. Potter. What we're going to be talking about today are Fibonacci numbers, and we're going to talk about how we can get those to show up in our Python Turtle programming. So I want to start by talking about what a Fibonacci number is. So Fibonacci numbers are numbers that follow a very specific pattern. So if I start off with numbers like 1 and 1, the next number in this sequence is going to be found by taking these two numbers and adding them together. So 1 plus 1 gives me 2. And the next number in this sequence is going to be adding 1 plus 2, which gives me 3. The next number is 2 plus 3, which is 5. 3 plus 5 is 8. 5 plus 8 is 13. And uh, so forth. And this pattern continues forever as long as we want to choose it. And there are a lot of very interesting relationships when you look at the Fibonacci numbers. For example, if you've ever heard of the golden mean, which is used a lot in art and other physical applications. The physical mean can be approximated by taking the nth Fibonacci number and dividing by the n minus 1th Fibonacci number. So in other words, if I was to look at 8 over 5 or 13 over 8 or 21 over 13, all of these are real good approximations for 1.618 dot dot dot, the 1 plus the square root of 5 divided by 2, which actually is the true golden mean. There's also a real interesting relationship between the Fibonacci numbers and Pascal's triangle, which I've got illustrated here. If I were to take diagonal lines like this, I get 1, and then 1 and 1 make 2, 2 and 1 make 3, 1 plus 3 plus 1 make 5, 3 plus 4 plus 1 make 8, 1 plus 6 plus 5 plus 1 makes 13, and if this was spaced out better, you could see these lines all follow this same pattern where I start off on the one and then I'm in the space between. So this is a really interesting uh, patterns and rules that Fibonacci numbers seem to follow. So we're going to talk about how to apply this using our uh, Python programming in Turtle's language. So we're going to go to sculpt.org. I'm going to go ahead and get rid of my existing program here. And we're going to put our name in here. Uh, we're going to go ahead and import turtle library and we're going to say t gets turtle dot turtle and then we're going to set up our fibonacci um, pattern so we're going to define fibonacci with two parameters we're going to have one parameter which we're going to call uh, state or step and then the second one is going to be the angle that we're dealing with and this is kind of going in the idea that we had in our previous tree, um, that the angle really should change as we go. So I'm keeping track of the step and the angle. And I've got this colon here denoting scope. So we're going to end up, oops, we're going to end up indented four spots. The first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to tell my turtle to move forward, whatever two times the angle is. And then I'm going to run those conditional statements. These really are the base case that we're trying to get to. Actually, the base cases, because keep in mind, the first and second Fibonacci numbers are 1. So if step is equal to 0, then we don't want to do anything other than just going forward. So if that step is 0, then we want to pass. It's just like if we're playing a card game. If I don't want to do anything in Python, I just say pass. So if the step is 0, pass. Else if the step is equal to 1, we also want to pass. Because in both of these situations, my 0th and first number, I just want to draw the segment. And that's it. What runs into the exciting part is, else, what do we want to do? So in the case of this, we want to do several things. We want to draw a left branch and a right branch. But keep in mind, if I go back to my Fibonacci numbers, this number 8 here that we've got, this number 8, is composed of adding up the previous numbers, 3 plus 5. So I want to go to the n minus 1 Fibonacci number, and then I want to go to the n minus 2 Fibonacci number. So I'm going to need to incorporate that. So I'm going to say, after this else, I'm going to do t dot left dot left, whatever my angle happens to be. And then I want to go ahead and Fibonacci, but I want to do it with my step minus 1 and my angle. And then I'm going to t.right, 
uh, 2 times the angle. This is the same idea that we had in our previous tree diagram, where I'm going to the left a little bit, and then I'm going to go, I have to go to the right twice as much. So I'm going, I have this tree, and then I'm going to go to the left some angle, and then whatever that angle was that we went from the left, I need to go twice as much to get the right branch of this. So that's what this 2 times angle is that we're doing down here. And then I'm going to run the Fibonacci method again, Fibonacci, but with the step minus two and the angle. And so what this is going to do is this is actually going to get us where we have the n minus one step and the n minus two step. We need to take care of both of these. Once we've done that, we're going to go back to where we were. So we're going to t dot left, whatever our angle is. And of course the idea is that if I if I went to the left so much and then I went to the right twice as much, I need to get the left once to make sure that we're back in the same direction that we were looking for. And now, once I do that, I'm ready to go backwards. So t dot backward at two times the angle. So in other words, however much forward I went, now I'm going to go back in my tree. So let's do some Fibonacci stuff. So I'm going to call on Fibonacci with the number 4 and a 15 degree angle. Now keep in mind my fourth Fibonacci number, that's 1, 1, 2, 3. So I should see three branches. So let's go ahead and run this and see what happens. Okay, actually I ended up with five branches because remember computers start counting at zero. So if, if I look at this from a table standpoint, the idea is that my zeroth Fibonacci number is one, my first Fibonacci number is two, my second Fibonacci number is two, because one plus one makes two, my third Fibonacci number is three, and my fourth Fibonacci number is five. So looking at what we've got here, if I'm doing my fourth Fibonacci number, I should have five branches. If I make this a five, my fifth Fibonacci number is going to be eight. So if I run this, I should have eight branches. So there's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and eight. And of course the branches are starting to touch together and that's because my angle's kind of big. If I tweak that down maybe a 13 degree angle, will that help? Now it still makes that touch, that's interesting. Um, so what this does is allows me to calculate Fibonacci numbers. If I was to do something like eight, let's see what happens. So I'm just gonna draw four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25, 26, 27, 28, 29, 30, 31, 32, 33, 34. And of course we know from our work earlier that 34 is one of our Fibonacci numbers and that's the zero, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eighth Fibonacci number. So it's a very interesting way of looking at this Fibonacci calculation coming from the tree idea that we started with last time. We're gonna continue with this idea of coming up with trees, but keep in mind that I have two different numbers that I can tweak. This first number is steps, so this tells me how many steps we're gonna go. Ultimately, it's gonna tell us the nth Fibonacci number if we let n be that value. And the second is the angle. The bigger the angle, then my wider the tree, the smaller the angle, then the narrower the tree. So if I was to make that a, a 20 degree angle, then we're going to see a much wider tree. And notice this thing actually spirals out almost off the screen. <clears throat> However, the way that the, the triangles are done, we still have, um, you know, and yeah, we do have like quite a bit going off the screen because 20 is not only the angle, but 20 is also the length that we're going. Um, so that's one other thing to keep in mind. What I could have done is I could have made this divided by two and divided by three. And if I try and do something like this, let's go back to a six Fibonacci. If the, if the branches of the tree are shorter, then I'm not going to see as much overlap, but I do also run into the issue of maybe they're too small to see. So let's go ahead and mop that up to a 30. There's my first branches. 
So I can experiment with these numbers. I can also experiment with the, with the formula that we're using here. There's lots of interesting stuff that we can do. And of course, I do encourage you to experiment. These numbers are meant to be changed. And there's also some interesting stuff that you can do if we're not starting with a one and a one. Uh, I suggest you look up Lucas numbers as an example of something that you can do to have some fun. But once again, this is Mr. Potter. Thank you for watching. Have a great day.